was an extraordinary year. And so many people did die at Angola, but there was a remnant that escaped, made their way to Miami, Key Biscayne, crossed the dangerous Gulf Stream, ended up... Uh, yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and that's the beautiful part of the story. Yeah. Stand by, so you come out to single on six. Stand by, have a six. Five, four, three, two, three, come. Welcome back, everyone. Legend has it there's a place in southwestern Florida where enslaved Africans and other freedom seekers could escape. Did it exist? What happened there? Joining us now is documentarian Vicki Oldham and archaeologist Sherry Speckes to tell us more about this place. Welcome to daytime, both of you. Thank you. Vicki, when did you first learn about Angola? Well, I was hired to write a script about the history of my hometown. And during the research process, I revisited the story that I already knew, say, 10 years prior. And so after we finished that documentary, the story, the message of Angola resonated with me and it stayed with me. You know how it is as a journalist. You, you're you nudged and it just stays with you. And so I thought, well, I've got to do something with this story. So I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll tell it in a documentary form. Well, what started as a documentary has ballooned into something that I, I never dreamed. And whereabouts exactly is it in Florida? Um, it's on the Manatee River. We evidence from historical maps, documents, and um, newspaper clippings that on the south edge of Tampa Bay along the Manatee River that this is where this group of people ended up making a community for about nine years between 1812 and 1821. And where did these people come from? They came from plantations in Georgia, Alabama, the Carolinas. They escaped the worst forms of slavery uh, on those plantations running into Florida for freedom, and they found it from 1812 to 1821. They lived in, in peace and they raised their families, just like what we want to do as Americans. All of us want that. Was it sort of a secret society that, that people just didn't know existed and then that, that's how they stayed safe? Well, they certainly did not want to be found, no. but they did trade with Seminoles and they trade traded with the British and uh, and Spanish. So, um, in, yes, in ways they did uh, keep themselves pretty isolated. That's what makes this search very challenging because they did not want to be found. But the story is important, Cindy, because these histories are lost. These histories help us round out the story of American history. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to tell them. We're giving voice to a people who had no voice in the 1800s. Sherry, how many people do we think lived there? Do we know? The best estimates from the historians is approximately 700. Um, and of those, uh, during the slave raid in 1821, many were taken back into slavery, but many escaped as well. And, and that's a, a very exciting part of the Angola story, is how they continued to live in freedom. How, would, how did they manage to escape? Well, there was a, a, a torching. It's similar to, I say, an 1800s Rosewood story. But people ran, you know, and somehow they made it through to Miami, where Key Biscayne is, they crossed the dangerous Gulf Stream and ended up in a place called Red Bays on Andrus Island in the Bahamas, where there's a descendant population uh, living there today. And that's, that's the beautiful part of this determination and courage and bravery and enterprise and creativity that the people had. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the things you found in this location. We've only done a couple test excavations so far. We had um, some ground penetrating tomography donated by Witten Technology, which gave us a couple places that we could possibly look. And some of the artifacts that we have found do date to that time period. Mm -hmm. We can tell from the blue edging and fluting on this and the bore on the pipe stem here that these were manufactured between 1780 and 1820. Now, that doesn't mean that we found Angola. Someone living there 20 years later could have had these artifacts, but they're tantalizing clues that tell us that we need to do more research, we need to do more excavations to try to really pin down where this community was. So some ended up uh, in, in Miami area, Key Biscayne? Uh, they, yes, they went to Key Biscayne and then they crossed that water into and ended up into the Bahamas. Did they have help or did they, did they make their own boats? How did they do that? Do we
we know? There were dugout canoes, and they boarded those canoes and made it on over to uh, the Bahamas. Have you been able to find any, any people that have ancestors from that time? That's why this research project is intriguing. We're putting the story out there in hopes of finding descendants of Angola. We know from oral histories taken uh, from the people in the Bahamas that there are they are ancestors. Marvelous. Vicki and Cherry, well, good luck to you both. I hope you find out everything that you want to know. Thank you. We'll Thank be right back so with much. more daytime, so don't go away. Okay, stand by. Stand Going by. on three. <laughs> Background television. One, two. <laughs> Let's get one more for safety. Here Jeez. we go. One, two, on three. All right. Yay. Thank you. Good to meet you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Very and much. we'll keep you posted. Yes, please do. I'm yeah, curious. Okay. Mark up there. Oh. Did you get that shot? Okay. Uh, it didn't need it. I think it worked fine without it. But they, they mentioned they showed a bunch of uh, artifacts when we talked about it. Is that a documentary you aired on TV? Uh, it aired on WEDU, okay. yes. <laughs> well, this is Scotty, need a stage. All right, up, Vicky, good job. I can um, watch your step. Copy. Girl. <laughs> Yes, I believe they were. They just pulled off. I wanted to get one more. There. <laughs>